Hi, Phil Priestley here again, and this video is about the important ability that we all need to apologise. Okay, so nobody's perfect and we all make mistakes. These days it can feel a bit like we're expected to be perfect all the time. It can make you feel quite insecure when you do something wrong and you misjudge something or a mistake happens. Sometimes you act on impulse and in the moment it works out really badly. Sometimes you just don't think things through. In truth, and this is absolutely true, every single person has been in that situation. We all do these things and we've all been there. Sometimes we get a bit preoccupied with our own feelings of embarrassment, guilt, shame, or the fact that when people challenge us for what we did, it can feel hostile and confrontational. We stop thinking about other people and we start focusing on ourselves. It's important that we show people that we're not like that. When we get more focused on trying to make ourselves look like the victim, people around us tend to get more angry and the situation gets worse. A lot of young people, when they talk to me in private, will tell me, I just feel like I'm getting it wrong all the time. The hardest part is being honest about how you feel because it does make you feel vulnerable. But this is where you start to move forward in a more positive way. What's really important in a situation like this is that being honest about your mistakes marks you out as an honest person. That takes courage and people respect those personal qualities. So knowing how to apologize is really important. And as a life skill, you can't get by without it because we all make mistakes, we've all made mistakes, and in the future, mistakes will be made. Sometimes the most expensive mistakes turn out to be the most valuable lessons. The important thing is, in that situation, that we learn from the mistake, and we do our best to help to repair any damage that we've caused. If people can see that you recognize any harm or damage that you've caused and that you actually do want to help to fix the situation and that you care about how other people feel, that's when things start to get better. If you've hurt or upset someone, going back to them to apologize, no matter how they take it, helps them to deal with it positively. If we reverse that situation, and remember a time when someone did something to you that you felt was wrong, I've got no doubt that if the person came back to you and admitted that what they did was wrong and they said they were sorry, that would have helped you a great deal. So making an apology, everyone knows how to do that, right? Well, actually, no. We don't actually have lessons on this stuff and some people are much better at it than others. I'm going to show you how to be better at it so that if you do need to apologise, you can do it properly. When someone gets brought in front of someone and then they mumble one word, sorry, before they shuffle off again, he doesn't look sincere, he doesn't look genuine, and it doesn't actually help anyone at all. If we think about the purpose of an apology, it's not to use a magic word like abracadabra, and it makes everything all right again. Sorry isn't a magic word. The aim of an apology is to help the other person to understand that you've thought about it. You can see you were in the wrong this time. And now that you've thought about it, you regret what you did. You wouldn't do the same thing again. And you'll try and do things differently in future. So we're going to look at the five steps of a good apology. And the next time that you need to apologize, 
if you explain these things, you'll see quite a different outcome that is much more positive for everyone, including you. Point one, say you are sorry. This includes saying why you're sorry. You can see how it hurt them and what was hurtful about what it was that you did. Straight away, put that up front. I'm sorry because I can see that what I did was hurtful and I've upset you. But be specific. Say exactly what it was that you did and say why or how it was hurtful. This is really brave. Point two, take personal responsibility. Make sure the other person knows that this is on you, nobody else. You don't use words like if or but, you don't blame anyone else. We don't do those apologies that sometimes you hear from politicians where you say, I'm sorry you feel that way. No, own it. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings is much better than when someone says, I'm sorry but, or I'm sorry if. It's not an apology at all. Making a statement like, this is my behavior, and I'm sorry about what I did, is far more convincing. Remember, a lot of people, when they receive an apology, are making up their minds about whether that they believe the person who's giving them the apology. Do they really mean it? Point three, offer to try to make it better. Sometimes there's nothing you can do, but sometimes there's something that can be done and it's important to try. Even if the situation can't be helped that much, making an honest offer to try to help someone is important. If there's anything I can do to make the situation better. If you ask if you can help, you're showing respect and you're giving them options, which is important. Point four, give some reassurance. After things have gone wrong, there's a possibility that you might end up in a feud or there might be some beef and that it could become a running issue. Telling someone this isn't going to happen, letting them know that everything's going to be cool now and that you know that you got it wrong, that's really significant. In addition, you might want to tell them that you're going to do your best not to repeat this behaviour or this incident or this mistake, either with them or with somebody else. Let them know that you've learned something from this. Point five, don't presume that this person is going to accept your apology. Ask them to accept your apology. You can ask this in a number of different ways. Ask them to forgive you. I'd be grateful if you could forgive me for this. I'd be really grateful if you could accept this apology so that we can move on. I understand how you might be feeling right now, but I'd really appreciate it if you would accept my apology. It would help me to feel a lot better about what I did. This is what we call empowering the victim. It gives them a sense of control so that they can potentially choose not to accept your apology. 99 times out of 100 though, an apology will be accepted and they will appreciate the fact that you ask them all the more. This method of apologizing works whether you apologize verbally and in person or whether you prefer to do it in writing. Apologies can make you feel really vulnerable, awkward and embarrassed. So some people prefer to say sorry by writing a note instead. Here's an example of how this can work in writing. Dear Miss Jones, Jones I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I was talking in your lesson and when you spoke to me about it, I lost my temper and caused an incident. 
and insulted you. It was very unkind and hurtful. This was my fault and I know that. If there's anything I can do to make the situation better, I'd really like to try. I just want you to know that I'm aware that my temper is a problem and I'm working on it. I want to reassure you that I'm going to do better in future. I would be really grateful if you could accept my apology. I'd be really kind of grateful regards. if you could accept this apology. With kind regards. Remember, we all make mistakes. We all let ourselves down from time to time. We all need forgiveness. When someone wrongs you, accept their apology. You might need their forgiveness one day too. Offering a proper apology can feel embarrassing. It takes courage, but it makes you a bigger and better person than you were. Use this simple method to help you do it properly. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.